Great, let's go ahead and get started. So um, I will start by introducing myself. My name is Haley Wolfinger and I'm a data scientist here at IQ. Um, I'll be introducing the rest of our team in just a minute, but I wanted to start with a few um, notes, a little bit of housekeeping. So um, I was just talking about the chat window. So if you do type in the chat, make sure you've changed the two to say two panelists and attendees. That way everyone can see uh, what you're chatting. We will also be having a Q&A session at the end. So anytime during the webinar, if you have a question, just throw it in the Q&A box and we will go through those at the end. Um, we'll try to get through all of the questions, but if we don't get to your question or time doesn't allow, then someone from our sales team can follow up with you directly after the webinar. Um, and then one last note, we are recording this webinar, so you can expect to get an email link afterwards so that you can rewatch if you would like. Okay, without further ado, let me introduce our team. So firstly, we have Sarah LeFay. Sarah will be leading this webinar today on AI scene detection, and she is the Director of Marketing at IQ. Um, Sarah might look familiar if you tuned into our last webinar a couple months ago. Also on our panelists today is Jeff Stevens. Jeff is our Chief Technology Officer, and he will be here to answer any technical questions that you guys might have during our Q&A session. And then lastly, we have Heath Lassiter. Heath joined the team recently as our new Director of Sales. If you have any questions that aren't covered today during the webinar, then you can email Heath directly. His contact information is here on the screen. It's just heath at iq.photos, and he can follow up with you afterwards. That is it from me. So I will turn it over to Sarah and let her take it from here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Haley. And welcome everyone. Super excited to be uh, showing you all about AI scene detection. Um, so like I said, my name is Sarah LeFay. I am Director of Marketing at IQ. Um, here is kind of an overview of what you can expect today. Uh, so first we are going to be going over uh, what is perfectly clear. Um, I know that there are a few new faces, so I just wanted to give a, a really quick rundown um, all about our technology. Then we will be getting into um, what is AI scene detection, the benefits, the accuracy, um, even custom scene detection, doing a quick demo, and then we will even give you a sneak peek onto our future roadmap, um, super exciting stuff there. And then at the end, we will have that Q&A that Haley was talking about. So if you do have any questions, just put them in that Q&A box, um, and then we will get to those at the end. So who are we? Who is Perfectly Clear? Who is IQ? Um, so we are <laughs> IQ. We are the creators of Perfectly Clear technology. Um, our goal here is to automatically correct any image that uh, you send our way. So we are helping some of the world's largest printers and imaging providers automatically correct more than 130 million photos every single day. So these are some of the typical corrections that Perfectly Clear does fully automatically. Um, our core corrections are meant to fix any issues that your photo might have. That's the first bucket we have here. Um, and then oftentimes our cameras don't capture an image correctly. So that's really what these uh, core corrections are, are meant to be doing. Beautify, uh, it can retouch portraits. And then our creative enhancements are great for those looking to get a little creative with their photos. And then here we have supporting technology, which is where AI scene detection falls. So now, what is AI scene detection? Um, AI scene detection is designed to take perfectly clears accuracy and automation abilities to the next level. So in summary, AI scene detection detects the scene or lighting condition of an image um, and then it applies a preset that has been specifically designed for that scene to ensure the best automatic correction possible. So really it's just making perfectly clear that much more intelligent. Um, and that's why I'm just so excited about it. So our presets have always been intelligent but this allows us to have a better range on a variety of photos. So here I have this photo of an adorable baby um, and you want a soft, subtle correction on a baby but you want something more vibrant on say a sunset. 
Um, so now with AI scene detection, you can do just that. Um, so here you'll see uh, this is the before image, and then we have iAuto, which is our typical uh, starting preset that is meant to be used on every single photo. But here with AI scene detection, we can really boost that vibrancy, um, make it so much more lifelike. Um, I always find that whenever I try to take a picture of a sunset, it just does not work out the way that I want. Um, but accuracy is key here. We want perfectly clear to have the most accurate correction as possible. Um, and you can see here that scene detection was able to achieve that. So now let's get into some of the benefits of AI scene detection. Um, so the main benefit here is that perfectly clear is now even smarter. Um, like I mentioned before, we can do a wider range of corrections depending on the scene and lighting condition. Secondly, you're also able to use AI scene detection outside of perfectly clear. So if you wanted to detect certain scenes without necessarily adding a correction, you could license this technology separately. Now, this is a really important slide. Um, our CTO, Jeff, created this decision tree that you see here. Um, thank you, Jeff. And the basis here is that our AI scene detection is just really smart. Presets are applied on a tiered system. Um, so of course, a lot of photos could be used under multiple categories. Um, so we really want the preset with the most accurate correction. And our goal is to never damage an image. So different weights have been added to all of these presets. Um, so for example, if AI scene detection is choosing between uh, say like the newborn preset or the sunset preset, it would choose the newborn preset because there will be no damage to that image at all. Um, so for most of our scenes, we have almost a 100% accuracy. Now, something to keep in mind here is that testing is really subjective and many of our test photos can fall under multiple scenes. Um, so again, the presets are based on a tiered system. So an image will never be damaged um, in the case that the exact preset is not chosen. Um, so that's, that's just something to really keep in mind here with the accuracy. Um, and now, if you were looking at the last couple of slides and disappointed that a scene you would like is not listed, then we can create it for you. Um, so it takes about two weeks and a thousand images to create a custom scene. Um, Jeff would be in charge of helping you out with that. And we've already created custom scenes for clients. Um, so it's proven, it's working really well. And it's a really great option for you if you are looking for something more specific in your business. Um, so just a few things to go over before I end up doing the demo. Um, so first, please email Heath, our new director of sales for pricing questions. Um, so his email is heath at iq.photos. Um, I don't know, Heath, if you wanna drop that in the chat for people. Um, second, AI scene detection will be available for customers soon. Um, so we are currently working on that rollout, but you can test right now. Um, so when I do the workbench demo, um, I'll kind of show you how to test, but it's super easy. Um, and Haley is going to be dropping a uh, workbench download link into the chat in case you don't have workbench. Um, the link is just Workbench is free for 30 days, so you can use that um, to be testing. And now I think it's time to see it in action. Um, so if you will just give me one second while I switch to Workbench. Right, I hope that everyone can be seeing my workbench screen. Um, so I already have some images loaded in here in the bottom. I'm just gonna close that out so that the, the screen is big enough for everyone to be seeing. Um, but over here on the left, this is AI scene detection. Super simple, super easy to use. Um, and side note, this, if you are, depending on your implementation of Perfectly Clear, this can run completely on its own in the back end, um, just picking the presets for you. So that, that's really how it goes with the um, automation option. You don't have to look at this at all if you don't want to. 
Um, so here we have the overexposed preset. This is the original. Um, this is the, the, the preset here. And if we compare that to iAuto, iAuto isn't quite strong enough here. It's definitely better than the original image, which is, has always been our goal. But just with that backlight preset, it's so much better. Um, so I have a few photos loaded in here, like I said. Um, so I can just go through a few and we can go over those corrections. Um, so you can kind of see uh, AI scene detection at work over here. So you'll see whatever is highlighted in orange is the preset that has been chosen. When I click on the image, um, that shows the before photo. So the, our baby preset, or sorry, newborn preset, um, it's for that soft, subtle correction of newborn babies. If I compare it to iAuto, iAuto is good. Um, it's a little bit harsh. Um, I prefer the newborn preset because it, it's just really soft and nice and subtle, just everything that you would want on a baby. And here we have a backlit image. Um, so this is the original image. You can really see that uh, the subject in this is very dark and then the, the background, of course, it's backlit. So it's very bright, um, but our backlight correction just brings so much detail, fixes that exposure um, on the subject. If I click to the usual iAuto preset, um, it's, it's better for sure, but it's not quite as good as our backlight preset. You can just see the difference in that detail there. Um, so that's another super exciting thing about AI scene detection. Um, it works on different uh, lighting qualities as well. So if you do have backlight images, overexposed images, um, this just makes perfectly clear correction that much better. And this is an example of our iAuto correction. So we do still have iAuto in AI scene detection. Um, it was really important for us to keep that there because iAuto is such a good correction. Um, it works really well on a variety of images such as this pet image. Um, so this is an example of where iAuto would still apply. And next I have two beautiful landscape scenes. Um, this is another one of my favorite presets for AI scene detection because compared to iAuto, we're just really able to make that foliage pop, add in more depth, vibrancy. Um, you can see this is the before image and compared to the AI scene detection, like it, it just really brings it to life. Same with this landscape, this is the before image and then this is after. You can just see all of that uh, foliage enhanced, sky enhanced compared to iAuto. iAuto is always better, but because we can use AI scene detection and really boost that vibrancy when it's meant to be boosted, um, this is a great use case for AI scene detection. We also added in the monochrome preset for AI scene detection because there are times, um, depending on your use case for perfectly clear, that you do have black and white images that are being passed through perfectly clear and you only want a really subtle correction on those. So we are still doing a, a little bit of a correction if you can see the before and after on here. Um, I know sometimes it's a little bit hard to see on, on Zoom and the quality isn't that great, um, but adding that black and white preset was something that a lot of, uh, of our customers have been asking us to do, and now we can do it more intelligently. And here we have a night scene, really subtle correction. Um, so you can see the be before and after. iAuto just brightens it way too much. You can see that it uh, gets a little noisy, this is not what you want your night scene to look like. Um, so we just do this really subtle, nice uh, nighttime correction on here. Um, that's not going to brighten your image too much at all. It's going to keep the integrity of the night photo that you want. Same with people at night. Um, so these again would be in a nightclub or a bar. Uh, now that uh, COVID is kind of slowing down we can get back out there um, taking all those nighttime photos. Um, so. This again is meant for kind of a lower light. Um, it's not going to be as harsh of a correction as iAuto. iAuto is just really brightening this photo up. It looks beautiful, but it's not keeping the integrity of the people at night like we want. Um, so we're still able to get that really nice, subtle nighttime correction. Um, it's meant to, it looks how it is meant to look here. And then here we have our posed portrait. Um, so this one is a super subtle correction because a lot of times um, posed portraits, if they're being done professionally, you have the lighting correct, you have your settings correct on your camera, you really don't need much. 
Um, so we're able to just kind of, we're boosting that a little bit, um, but subtly enough that, you know, we know that you have everything the way that you want uh, camera settings wise. So we're not gonna do anything crazy to this. Um, and post portrait is really defined as kind of like a headshot. Um, so it's really shoulders up um, any professional image. And then this is an example of our clip art detection. Um, so you, we do not want to be uh, correcting any sort of clip art or drawings or, or things that just aren't meant to be corrected. Um, so you can see here clip art is detected. Um, we're not going to be correcting SpongeBob. We're just going to skip right over him. And then here is that beautiful sunset example um, before, after, like I was saying, you just really can't ever capture that sunset the way that you want. Now we are able to just really give that some beautiful vivid colors. If I go into iAuto and compare that before and after, it's great, it's beautiful, it's better, but now our sunset preset can really uh, make it more vivid, add our sky enhance um, option to it as well so that you're just getting that really beautiful sunset and I'm sure that this sunset is a lot more accurate in this edited image than it is in this uh, really dark um, before image as well. And then lastly, we have our fearless leader and CEO, Brad. Um, he modeled for us for this yearbook photo. Um, so you can see the before and after. And this of course is a really specific niche here um, for anyone that does yearbook photos. We created this preset specially for you um, compared to iAuto. You can see iAuto is just a little bit too bright, a little too harsh. So we created this yearbook scene um, and you are welcome to use that. And just a few more notes for testing. Um, so you can actually tweak any of these presets. So if you come into this landscape preset and say, I really like it, it's beautiful, but I might want something just a little bit less vibrant, then you can totally do that. Um, so you can come in over here. If you're familiar with Workbench or familiar with Perfectly Clear, then you can see that this is all, um, all editable. You can tweak any preset. So if I wanna change the exposure or I want to do a little less color vibrancy or things like that, um, then you can do that on here. And all you have to do is click this little gear uh, icon and then you would say add or edit the preset. And I usually name it something different so that I can find it later. So I'd say like edit one. And then you can say uh, your description in here. We can pick a cute icon like the dog because I, I'm a dog person um, and that's really all that you have to do. Um, and if you were to tweak that preset and then did not like it afterwards, no problem at all. You just click this little, uh, I guess it's a broom or sweeping icon and then you click that and it brings everything completely back to normal. Another note for testing, um, if you were to be messing around with some of these presets and then you forget, oh no, I, I don't know what, what preset is listed um, on here. Of course, it's a landscape. You just click this uh, arrow, the play button, and it will bring AI scene detection right back on. Um, so it's, it's super simple to be testing. And like I said, it works automatically completely in the back end. Um, so as I'm going through all of these, you can see the preset is changing over here. Um, you do not have to be on workbench checking, making sure that everything um, is working correctly. It will all work and be fully automated in the back end. Um, so just super exciting. Um, please, if there's anything that I've missed or anything that you would like to hear further about, then um, ask in the Q&A and we will be getting to those. Um, before we do though, I just wanted to quickly uh, share my screen again for our presentation. Um, we have quite a few things going on upcoming um, that I am really excited to share with you. This is just chapter one of our three chapter uh, artificial intelligence strategy that we are going to be rolling out. Um, so we're really just scratching the surface here. Um, so first we have AI scene detection just launched. 
We're ready to roll it out. We're really excited for our customers to start using it. Next, we are really, really excited that we are about to launch Perfectly Clear AI video. Um, so we are almost ready to be launching that, just tying up a few loose ends. Um, so if your business does anything with video, then please email Heath Heath at iq.photos again. Um, he would love to give you a demo, show you everything that's going on with that. I do have a few sneak peek slides that I'll share with you as well. Um, and then another super exciting thing is that we are going to be integrating even more artificial intelligence into our perfectly clear core. Um, so our corrections are going to get even better if you can even believe that. Um, so here we have our perfectly clear video. Um, so it can either enhance videos as you take them or add an enhancement to pre-recorded videos. This is an example of um, one of our demos. This was a beautiful uh, Luau photo, uh, video that um, our CEO Brad took. Um, so you can kind of see it working here. And then you can really see it working here um, in this example. You can see the exposure just, just brightening everything up. Um, this as well is another drone shot that we have. You can see the foliage enhance at work, the sky enhance, um, just looking really, really good with uh, our new video solution that you are one of the first to know about. And then lastly, um, Perfectly Clear AI. This we are hoping to roll out in the fall, um, but it will just make our corrections that much better. Um, so here you have the original image, super dark, can't even see the faces at all. A little bit of a tint, I would say, and just completely washed out in the back. Our current technology, this is um, our iAuto preset, and it looks good. It's definitely better than this original photo. You can see a little bit more of her face. You can see her face. Um, still a little bit of tint and a little bit washed out back here, but definitely a step up. But with our new um, perfectly clear AI, it's going to be even better. Um, so you can now see both of their faces. We're able to kind of target that exposure correction uh, that much more. We're already very, very intelligent correction, but this is just another step up. Um, here we have highlight recovery. This is just the most amazing thing to me. I hope that you can see it over Zoom. Um, but back here, it's just such a difference, all that detail that's being brought back. And then vivid colors. Um, of course, we want everything to look as accurate as possible. And if there is a blue sky in the image, we want that blue sky to show through. Um, so just really, really excited about all of this. And I hope that you stay up to date with us. Um, if you are a customer, of course, we will be keeping you in the know about everything. But um, if you are interested in Perfectly Clear, or anything that we are currently doing, um, I would definitely email Heath. <laughs> and that brings us to the Q&A. So if I can ask everyone to come back. Thank you, Sarah. That was awesome. Loved all of your visuals. Um, we you. have had several great questions come through during your presentation. So let's just dive right in. Um, and awesome. a quick reminder to everyone, if you do have a question, feel free to drop it in the Q&A now. So question for Sarah, I do mostly outdoor portraits. Do you have an outdoor portrait scene or would that be a custom scene? So right now we do not have a scene created specifically for outdoor portraits, I would say that I would definitely use that workbench link that Haley put in to test um, and see if the scenes that we do have work for you. But otherwise, um, like I mentioned, we do have that uh, ability to create custom scenes for you. Um, and that might be a really great opportunity to uh, use that for your advantage. Um, Jeff, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more to custom scenes and how easy that is to build. Sure, yeah. Uh, and like Sarah said, I think our posed portrait scene might detect the outdoor portraits accurately enough um, for that use. And if not, we'll just build it for you. Uh, we've already done this once. We're working on it for another customer right now. Um, yeah, so the custom scene detection is a great way to use the idea of scene detection, but with your specific types of photography. 
um, maybe it's indoor portraits or outdoor portraits or um, uh, you know, photos for different uses, um, groups or individuals, um, indoor, um, you know, wedding scenes, indoor churches, um, those, those things. Um, and it's an easy process. The first step is that we work with you to define what the scenes are, how many scenes there are, um, and help set up the presets for each of those different scenes. Then we work with you to gather some images out of your data set. It's very important for these to be as broad cover is broad um, range of um, image types that fit in each scene. Um, so we'll review that as we're accumulating these images. Um, we'll review that together with our AI scientists. Once that all looks good, we'll go away for a week or two, build the actual scene detection engine, do some QA internally, make sure it works. We'll be in constant communication with you during this process, give you updated workbench builds, that shows this working. So instead of picking the 10 or 12 presets and scenes that are built into Workbench now, it'll pick your scenes instead automatically. Um, you can also use our scenes in conjunction with that. If you just want to add one or two, that's fine. Um, or if you just want to replace ours entirely and you only care about the three or four scenes that your um, you know, clients shoot or, or that you know fits the problem you're trying to solve, um, it's totally up to you. So that's custom scene detection. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Jeff, I have another question for you. It's kind of a two parter. Um, it says, I assume most of the edits are being done to JPEG or TIFF images. If highlights or shadows are blown out, then I assume that you cannot recover them as you seem to be working with TIFF or JPEG files. Yeah, the, this is designed for our B2B space, which is almost exclusively JPEGs uploaded by customers. We do have a small number of, uh, of our business community customers that accept raw files. Um, this will be coming to Quick, Quick Server in the future, um, and those products support raw. So yes, uh, anything that can be done on raw files, anything that can be done in those applications uh, can be included in scene detection. Um, so, but 99% of our business community are using JPEGs. Um, and yes, if the, if, if it's clipped and there's no data in that JPEG, then there's nothing for us to work with there. Thank you, Jeff. Question for Sarah. Um, it used to be a plug-in to Lightroom, but how are you selling perfectly clear now? Is this just for big box lab for mass production? So this whole presentation is all about our uh, business licensing. Um, so you can license this technology, license perfectly clear. Um, we do have our sector for consumer products, um, which we do still have that plug in. And if you want to email me at sarah at iq.photos, then I can send you in the right direction. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, I have another question for you. I love the preset that I'm using now and perfectly clear. Do I have to use AI scene detection? You do not. Um, if you are loving your preset, then we are not going to take that away from you. Um, you can choose whether or not you do want to use AI scene detection, um, regardless of what implementation you have. Um, so you can turn it on or off. Um, I do urge you to try AI scene detection and I would love you to be testing it in Workbench and just seeing how awesome it is um, because the purpose here really is to make perfectly clear uh, just that much smarter. Um, like I was saying with just the differences in the correction that you want for a baby versus a sunset, that is really where uh, perfectly clear AI scene detection is um, in my opinion, just the most amazing thing. Um, so we really have that option to be adding a wider range of corrections. Um, but yes, if you don't want to use it, you do not have to. And, and I'll jump in there. One other thing that you can do is use your favorite preset in place of the auto in our scene detection, but then use the other, you know, some of the presets, you know, for babies or landscapes. So use what you like for general photos, but maybe there's some specific ones. The the outdoor and at night and the people at night presets are, are particularly important, I think, um, because a general preset will, will boost those. It's a, it sees a dark image and it tries to recover detail there. So specifically not boosting exposure in those 
you know, in images that are supposed to be dark um, or the black and white, some of those very specific presets uh, does, a, does a whole lot to, to uh, improve overall image quality. But yeah, you can use your presets instead of ours with our scenes um, or, or just use ours or just use yours. Awesome, thank you both. Question for Jeff, how do I use this scene detection in the SDK? Yeah, great question. So uh, what we've been talking about and demoing here has been in Workbench. We've been talking about our quick desk and quick server um, desktop products, but this is entirely designed for, or not entirely, but but mostly focused at our SDK customers. So that take our life, take our technology, license it, and package it in, into their products. So there are two ways that it can run in our SDK. It can either um, just load an image, detect the scene, automatically apply either your custom preset for that scene or our default preset for that scene. Um, or we also have this uh, scene detection server. So it's a separate little implementation that you run and you send an image to it and it just tells you what scene it is. And then your custom code can um, take that and then apply whatever presets you want to it. Uh, we will also obviously um, be here to answer questions, to move through that deployment process with you, to help integrate it into your either desktop products or server-side implementations, um, however you, you are using us. Um, so we've got sample code and easy process to get the presets out of Workbench and into, into the SDK if you, if you want to use our scenes, but your presets. Um, and uh, yeah, once you once you sign up and get on board, we'll be we'll be in touch with all the details for your specific implementation. Awesome, thank you very much. We've got a bit more time here, so we can take a few more questions. Question for Sarah: When can I start using AI scene detection? Well, we are almost ready to be rolling out, but you can use it right now if you download Workbench. Um, so right now we are asking everyone to just be uh, testing, making sure um, that you are comfortable with the uh, presets that you'd be using in Workbench. Um, and then if you are interested in AI scene detection, then please email Keith at iq.photos um, because he will be able to set all of that up for you and get that implemented. Wonderful. Jeff, I've got another question for you. How are you managing HEIC images? Uh, right now we're not. Uh, um, our SDK support, our, we have two ways to load images in our SDK, um, either using the support technology, what we call PFC image file, um, which supports JPEGs, TIFFs, PINGs, and web, WebP files. Um, but if you are integrating us into a workflow that already supports HEIC or HEIF for any other image format, then all we need is the raster data out of that. Um, we don't have a system to, to process and convert um, HEIC or HEIF images right now. Um, but if that's important to you, um, we can build it. Um, we built WebP for one of our specific customers um, and we can, we can do HEIF or HEIC support also um, if you need it. So yeah, just uh, ping me or HEIF and we can talk about the details, what your implementation looks like um, and get that built for you. Awesome. Um, Sarah, you touched on this briefly, but I have a question about um, what happens when a photo could belong to more than one category? Yes, so that is a big question that um, Jeff can probably speak a little bit more to as well. Um, but because the presets are on a tiered system, or I guess they're more, more accurately would be weighted, um, we have weighted the presets that we think um, will be the least, for lack of a better word, damaging to an image. Um, so that one will be chosen first. Yeah, so what we do here is, like Sarah mentioned, we have this, this idea of a weighting system so that um, we can tune uh, 
what, what is more important? If you have a, a baby on a beach, um, do you want to apply the baby preset or the beach preset uh, or the sunset preset? Um, we have set those weights to be rather conservative. To, so if there are two options, um, so if you look at the infant's newborn preset and the sunset preset, what the sunset preset does is it's extra aggressive. It adds more color saturation um, than our normal iota would. Whereas the newborn preset is more gentle. It's more conservative. In a fully automated workflow, the goal is to be as conservative as possible while still delivering the best image quality. So in that case, assigning to the newborn preset is the right thing to do um, because accidentally um, applying too strong of a preset to a newborn um, is worse than, than not improving an image enough, um, which would be, you know, the other alternative. Um, but again, just like in the custom scene world, we can, we can tune that for you. If you have different um, priorities, different needs, those weights are something that we can do. Those aren't exposed to our customer. That's built into the model itself. Um, but we took a lot of time uh, to study our category, study the presets that we're applying to each of those categories to make sure that where there is overlap, um, the more conservative preset is applied by default. Well said. These are all great questions. Um, I've got one more for Jeff. Do I have to use all 12 categories or can I use just some? Yeah, great question. There are two ways. So no, you can do anything you want. That's, that's always the answer. Um, there are two ways you can achieve that. One is use all 12 but just use your default presets in half of them and then use the custom ones for the few categories that you do care about. Um, or if that's um, cumbersome, then we can build a custom model that just removes the ones you don't care about. It applies iAuto or a single default instead, but still selects for you know newborns and landscapes or, or whatever the few that, that happen to be relevant for your business. So you can do it yourself by just making all the other presets I auto, um, or you can ask for us to get involved and, and make a custom solution for you. Great. All right, that concludes our list of attendee questions, unless anyone has something that they wanna drop in the chat last minute. Um, otherwise, we are so appreciative of you all attending this webinar today. We hope that you found it useful. Um, thank you for being here. Of course, if any questions come up, feel free to reach out. Um, and we look forward to talking to you more soon. Great. Thank you so Thanks, much, everyone. everyone. Thank you.